Well, hello, hello, lovely to have you here. On today's video, what I want to do is discuss something about Buddhist practice and codependency. I had a recent question from one of my viewers who asks this. She asks, I would like a video by you about boundaries for Buddhists. I always wonder about unlimited compassion turning into codependency when it comes to real-world relationships with family, a significant other, or work relationships. Now, uh, lots of folks have concerns about this problem or related problems. Indeed, uh, a question that keeps coming up in my uh, videos when I discuss uh, Buddhist practices of loving-kindness or compassion or the like, people will be concerned that uh, these kinds of practices might mean that we're going to be walked all over by other people, that, that, that that's somehow what they mean, or, in the, as in this case, that we will become perhaps codependent with somebody, uh, somebody near to us, dear to us, and so therefore uh, these practices may in fact not be healthy for us. Now to begin with, what does codependency mean? It may be helpful at least to get a definition. Here's uh, one definition that I found of codependency here on the internet. It says, Codependency is a dysfunctional relationship dynamic where one person assumes the role of the giver, quote-unquote, sacrificing their own needs and well-being for the sake of the other, the taker. The bond in question doesn't have to be romantic. It can occur just as easily between parent and child, friends, and family members. Now, obviously, this is a very big problem, one that's way too big to deal with in a single video here on YouTube, but I want to at least uh, sketch an outline here. So we understand that the codependent relationship is where we are perhaps the person who feels that we have to fix everything with other people, or mo most likely with one other person in particular. And one thing that, that I do want to say at the outset is that this kind of codependency is not compatible or consistent with Buddhist ideals of boundless compassion or boundless kindness. Now, why is that? It's because codependency is itself a kind of deep attachment rather than something that is arising from wisdom. And this kind of codependency can arise through feelings of low self-esteem. In order to combat our low self-esteem, we may feel that we need some form of agency. We need to make a difference in the world. That's indeed a, a healthy kind of mindset in general. But what we decide to do is, instead of focusing on our own issues, we decide that it's easier or better to focus on somebody else's issues, in other words, to sort of fix them, quote-unquote, in order to feel a sense of agency, in order to, as it were, deal with our own sense of low self-esteem. Now, this is uh, perhaps springs from a kind of a beneficial end, in other words, we feel that we're trying to do something good in the world, but if we're, if we're caught up in codependency, it's really a kind of ignorance that's, that's at issue. It's, we're not going to make things better, we're going to make things worse. One uh, typical example of this is, say, a spouse whose spouse is uh, dealing with uh, some kind of addiction problem, and the spouse may feel that it's better to cover up that addiction. To, to pretend that it doesn't exist, to make excuses for the spouse so as to make it easier for them. And we may feel that if we're doing that, we may feel that we're helping, that we're making things better, we're making things easier. And that gives us a sense of agency. In other words, making them right or helping them out makes us feel better about ourselves. It makes us feel like we're the fixer here. We're making things better. And this may involve a feeling of pity on our part. Pity, in Buddhaghosa's understanding, Buddhaghosa being a great a Buddhist scholar of the 5th century of the Common Era, uh, pity is a near enemy of compassion. Pity is where we uh, look at somebody else's misfortune and feel greater than them because we're not going through that misfortune or because we can help them out in some way. By being the fixer, we're putting ourselves in a superior position relative to them and in that way, we seem to be, again, seem to be helping our sense of low self-esteem by uh, pulling ourselves up a bit over people around us and by apparently fixing their problems. The fixer, quote-unquote, puts him or herself in a superior position relative to those that need fixing, so to say. 
or we may simply use the problems of others as a kind of distraction. In other words, instead of spending time dealing with our own issues, we prefer to distract ourselves by not thinking about ourselves and dealing with the problems of people in front of us that, again, seem easier to us, quote unquote, I mean, they, they, they aren't easier, but they seem easier for us to deal with than our own internal issues. On the other hand, uh, true loving kindness, true compassion in Buddhism are said to be boundless. That is to say, we're not dealing with the problems of one person to the exclusion of everybody else, or for that matter, to the exclusion of ourselves, but rather the boundless attitude is one that is supposed to encompass everybody at once. So if by quote unquote helping somebody, we're really hurting other people, that's a problem. That's not something that's compatible with this kind of kindness insofar as we can see that. If by helping them, we're actually hurting ourselves, again, that's not really the same thing as this kind of boundless compassion. The ideal is kindness or compassion for all beings. If our spouse or our boss is hurting other people, then we need to deal with that first in order to, uh, in order to solve the greater problem. If what we're doing is covering up for that hurt, as in the case that I discussed earlier, where uh, maybe our spouse is dealing with, uh, with, with issues of, of certain kinds of addictions, we have to deal with those addictions first, or in, in some way we, uh, we can't really deal with that for them, because in a, in a sense we can't fix somebody else except in very, very narrow circumstances. So we have to understand that the fix, the greater fix, comes from them rather than from our attempting to fix the, the problem from the outside. And in this way, I think we can come to see that these ideals of, of boundless kindness, boundless compassion, and so on, are ideally selfless attitudes. They're not about puffing up our own sense of self. They're not about uh, dealing with our own sense of insecurities or a sense of low self-worth. Rather, they're an attempt to get beyond the idea of self, to uh, view us all as in this together, as it were. Now, while the, the Buddha did say that it was, it was perfectly fine to help somebody out with an idea that, that it might come back to us as well, in other words, we help them out so that they can help us out in the future, that's a, a perfectly normal kind of uh, human intention, and there's nothing specifically wrong about that from Buddhism, but it's not the, it's not the ideal. The ideal is that we act without a sense of somebody having to, or potentially helping us back in the future. Now, it's important to stress that I'm discussing the ideals here, Buddhist ideals. That is, the ideal is that uh, kindness and compassion be boundless, that they be equanimous as to who we're discussing, that they're not focused on one particular person to the exclusion of others. Ideally, these should be selfless, not in the sense of excluding ourselves or forgetting about ourselves or somehow denigrating ourselves, but instead in the sense that we're not doing it in order to puff up ourselves, we're not doing it in order to get something back. So in cultivating these kinds of states of kindness and compassion and so on, what we're doing is purifying rather than bolstering, if you like. Purifying in, in Buddhaghosa's phrase, again, Buddhaghosa, this uh, great Buddhist scholar and practitioner of the 5th century, his major work is known as the path of purification. Uh, again, that being understood that the Buddhist path is a path of purifying the mind. And so that's the attempt here, is to purify our minds. Now, we shouldn't, as a result, beat ourselves up for not necessarily coming up to the ideal. Uh, very few of us can. Uh, rather, we should simply use the discussion I've, uh, I've been having today as information for us, to, some, things, some, some things to keep in mind, to keep in mind that these kinds of practices can devolve into codependency at times, and we should watch out for that. In the same way that uh, we should watch out for other kinds of, of problems like spiritual materialism or like uh, spiritual uh, bypassing, these are both issues I've done videos about in the past. I'll leave links to those down below in the notes. Those are equally problematic kinds of uh, syndromes we can get ourselves into when it comes to these practices. 
And I would uh, submit that in a spiritual practice, this kind of codependency can be a particular problem if we're involved in a guru practice, a, pra a very close practice with a teacher. That is, either the teacher or the student can become, if they're unhealthy in some way, codependent with the other. Uh, and this may seem to us, this may masquerade as loving kindness or compassion for the other, but in fact be a form of of close dependency, of attachment that's not healthy. Indeed, attachment is not the same as loving kindness, nor is it the same as compassion. For Buddhaghosa, in fact, attachment is the near enemy of compassion. It's what we should try to avoid, although it looks similar from the outside. Uh, attachment is a kind of a greedy, uh, a greedy kind of attitude rather than a selfless attitude. And I would recommend, if you aren't familiar with them, to take a look at my videos on the, the four, what are known as the Brahma Viharas. That are, that, those are these practices of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. And I have a, a playlist about those that I'll, I'll leave a link to up here on the screen if you haven't seen them or want a refresher. Thanks so much for watching. If you're getting something out of these videos of mine, consider taking a look at my Patreon page, which is linked here and down below in the notes and see if you want to help support the channel and the work that we're all doing here. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next video. And meanwhile, all of you, be well.